My name is Misaki, and I work at a regular company. On this day, I came to a ski resort with my boyfriend, Cadmus. Wow! This is my first time coming to the slopes at night, and it's absolutely beautiful. Isn't it? Natural scenery and artificial lighting surprisingly go well together. The illuminated cherry blossoms at night are beautiful too, and so are the Christmas lights. You're right. Especially on the slopes, the lights reflect vividly. It looks so bright and sparkling. Yes, and the most sparkling thing of all, is this diamond. A diamond? No way. A diamond ring. Does this mean? Misaki, will you marry me? And light up the slopes of my life with your light. Thank you, Cadmus. I'm so happy. Really? Will you light up my slopes? Of course, sorry. That strange metaphor is just a bit. What? It didn't work. I put a lot of thought into it. I appreciate all the thought you put into it, and I'm grateful you prepared this scenery too. But I'm sorry, the slopes and light part is just a bit much. I see. Ick, I'll probably hear about this for the rest of my life. I couldn't help but laugh, but I was incredibly happy to be proposed to at the ski resort where we first met. Soon after, we got married and decided to share the news with someone special. So, we got married. Well, congratulations to both of you. Yes, from now on, I'll be lighting up Cadmus's slopes. Come on, Misaki, why did you have to say that? Oh, what's this? Did he propose in an embarrassing way? Yes, actually, he proposed on the night slopes. Uh, stop, stop, don't say any more. It was Daiki who got me into skiing, and one of Daiki's ski buddies was Cadmus. With Daiki's blessing, the future looked even brighter. A year later, I had a strong desire to have a child, but we were not blessed with one. How did it go? Judging by that look, the result is the same as always. Yes, it didn't work this time either. Heck, we only get one chance a month, and who knows how much effort it will take. Damn, it's been really tough because of you lately. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Man, I never thought Misaki would be infertile. Talk about bad luck for me. What? Don't say it like that, that I'm infertile. Even with fertility treatments, there was no improvement, and trying to conceive had become a significant mental burden. A few days later, I noticed Cadmus's phone left on the table with the screen still on. Ha, huh, it's rare for his phone to be left on. Wait, is this complaints about fertility treatments? Is he venting to someone online? Why would he do that? And that was a refreshing bathroom break. Wait, Misaki, what are you doing in front of my phone? So, you've been badmouthing me to someone like this. It's really hurtful. Ah, uh, well, I... I'm sorry, it was thoughtless of me. I thought Cadmus felt the same way about the ongoing struggle, but it was a huge shock to find out he was badmouthing me behind my back. One day, while we were at home together, the doorbell rang. Hello, is this Cadmus's house? Yes, it is. Do you need to see Cadmus? I can call him. May I have your name? Oh, Hestia. Thanks for coming. Come on in. Thanks, I'll come in then. What? Wait, Cadmus? You didn't tell me we were having a guest. It's fine, it's a surprise. A surprise. Let me introduce you, this is my new girlfriend, Hestia. What? New girlfriend? Nice to meet you. So, you're the woman Cadmus is disappointed in. Yeah, you can tell just from the vibe, right? Hold on, what is this? Are you mocking me? Pretty much, Cadmus told me you still haven't been able to have a child, so I guess you must be quite unlucky. Hestia is my emotional support now, calling her a goddess isn't an exaggeration. Our daily conversations have saved me so much. Daily conversations? Wait, are you talking about that line chat? Sneaking peeks at Cadmus's phone and then getting hysterical. How narrow-minded. As his wife, you should have the decency to not invade his privacy. You only cause me pain now. No way. I thought I was supporting you all this time. To me, you're just that, as I said. Hestia is my girlfriend now. And on top of that, she's pregnant. It's the fruit of our love. Pregnant? Is that true? Absolutely. I've done what you couldn't. Even if you have a pretty face, if you can't make Cadmus happy, you're a failure as a wife. So, from now on, I'm living my life with Hestia. Here, sign these papers. With that, Cadmus handed me the already filled out divorce papers. I decided that I could no longer stay with Cadmus. All right, I'll divorce you. Ah, uh, so you do have some sense after all. Well, it's only natural that you'd get divorced. So, should I sign these now? Feel free to do it at your own pace, no rush. We have preparations to make ourselves. But first, a toast with Hestia. We'll be heading out now, and we'll be back tomorrow. Take care. 
He, we're going to have so much fun tonight. After watching the two of them leave together happily, I decided to put my plan into action. The next day, in the early afternoon, Cadmus returned. I'm back. Yesterday was the best. Wait, why does the house look so empty? Hey, why is there so little stuff in the house? Oh, you finally came back. Don't you think you enjoyed yourself a bit too much? That's none of your business. Wait, wait, wait. I just noticed all my stuff is gone. Where did you put it? Oh, I sent everything to that Hestia woman's place. Sent it? Why would you do that? Why? Because it doesn't make sense to keep things that belong to a complete stranger. Actually, you should thank me for doing the cleanup for you. No, wait, that would just irritate me more, so don't thank me. A stranger. You don't have to put it like that, do you? We're still married after all. No, we're not officially married anymore. I already submitted the divorce papers, and they've been processed. What? You already filed them yesterday? That's way too fast. Dragging out this halfway state would be a waste of time for both of us. So it's better to end things cleanly, don't you think? Well, yay, I guess you're right when you put it that way. Cadmus was initially surprised, but he began to understand as I explained the situation. Just then. Hey Cadmus, I need that ski wax I lent you the other day. Can you return it? Deki, sorry, give me a minute. Wait, I left it here, but... It's not there. Not there? Where did you put it? I didn't put it away. I sent it. Everything related to you was sent to that woman's place. Seriously, the timing couldn't be worse. Huh, what's going on? Can't find the wax? Sorry, Daiki. Actually, Cadmus cheated on me, so we got divorced. I sent all his stuff to his mistress's place. Oh, well that son. Wait, what? Divorced? Cheated? What is this? This is the first I'm hearing of it. It was a shock to me too. If you can believe it, yesterday he brought his mistress here and told me to divorce him. Hey, why are you spilling all that? What, Cadmus? What were you thinking? No, Dakey, it's not like that. I had no choice. No choice? Bringing your mistress here. That's beyond outrageous. He handed me the divorce papers right then and there. He even said she's pregnant. I realized I couldn't do anything about it and agreed to the divorce. Then they went out to celebrate with a toast. Isn't that awful? Pregnant. Celebrating. And in front of Misaki. How could you do something so despicable? It's not just unworthy of a husband or a man, but as a human being. Well, you don't have to go that far. I had a valid reason for all this. Don't be ridiculous. There's no excuse for this kind of behavior. There is. Misaki's infertility meant we couldn't have children. The emotional pain was too much. I couldn't take it anymore. So it's all Misaki's fault. As Cadmus started to say outrageous things with a serious expression, Daiki was left speechless. Cadmus, what is the meaning of these infertility treatment results? Estia, what? How did you get that? Oh, I sent it along with your things. I thought it was important for you both, so I made sure it was clear. So that's Cadmus's mistress. But why is she so angry? Hey Cadmus, could it be that you're the one who's infertile? No, I'm not infertile. Don't look at me like that. Those are the official test results from the hospital, meaning you're infertile. I told you I'm not. I'm a fully functional playboy. Man, what are you yelling about? Misaki's just saying that to escape reality. That's what we call a boomerang. My test results were fine. You've been in denial this whole time. Shut up, shut up. I told you I'm not. Then what is this test result paper? Did you lie to me? What the? Are you going to believe that piece of paper do, Hestia? It's an official result. You're an infertile loser. Wait, what does that mean? So, Hestia, you've been with another man, haven't you? What? No way. Don't make baseless accusations. You're the one making things up. What did you get from an infertile loser like me? Yeah, you finally admit you're infertile. I told you I wouldn't marry an infertile man. We're done. I'm not marrying you. What? I wouldn't want to marry a cheating woman with a weak brain. I don't want to hear that from a cheater with a wife. An infertile cheater has nothing going for him. You, you just crossed the line. This is brutal. Is this what a mud fight looks like? Daiki was exasperated, watching Cadmus and Hestia bicker with flushed faces. I couldn't bear to listen anymore. This is becoming a nuisance for the neighbors, so if you two want to keep this up, take it outside. You've got to be kidding. How is this just playing around? With such a low-level argument, what else can I call it? Anyway, both of you should prepare to pay damages. What? 
Damages. Why should I have to pay that? Yay. I've decided to cut ties with this man. Paying damages doesn't make any sense. Enough. Do you really think you can get away with this? No, the one being unreasonable is Misaki. Adultery is a violation of the marital fidelity obligation under civil law. And making false statements to defame someone is a criminal insult under the penal code. You're nothing but a criminal. What? A criminal? And you, the mistress, are also violating civil law. Misaki has suffered great emotional distress because of this. If Misaki decides to pursue this, you know what will happen, right? What? How does he know so much about the law? This is bad. If this continues, we'll be sued and lose everything. I'm sorry, Misaki. I was blinded by this cheap woman. I was wrong. What? Cheap woman? You used to praise me so much. That was just my clouded judgment. You're not worth anything. Don't you dare talk to me like that. I don't want to hear it from you. Please, Misaki, forgive me. Sorry, but I'm not that forgiving. Ask your so-called goddess for help. I wish you two happiness. Look forward to hearing from my lawyer. If you think you've won by doing this, you're dead wrong. I'm just asserting my rightful claim. There's no revenge here. Wanting revenge means I'd care about you too, and I don't. Sorry, but I have no interest in either of you. Goodbye forever. Wait, give me another chance. I'll acknowledge everything and be a good husband this time. Go make that promise to your so-called goddess. I said I'm not interested. Goodbye forever. No, this can't be happening. Whatever. I'm not even upset. With that, Cadmus and Hestia walked away dejectedly. After that, I consulted a lawyer about the situation and claimed damages from both of them. Cadmus had to take out a loan to pay the full amount. Hestia used up her savings to pay her part, but her multiple affairs were exposed, leading to lawsuits and more debt. Eventually, they broke up after a series of arguments and ended up living alone, burdened by their debts. Cadmus continued to work with a gloomy face, struggling with his lost confidence and debt. Hestia kept trying unsuccessfully to hook up with someone, leading a hollow life. As for me. By the way, I tried that world's sweetest candy you mentioned the other day. How was it? Did you end up buying a whole box? Oh, uh, no, it wasn't really to my taste. What? But it's sweet. Sweetness is justice. And it's the world's sweetest. Whoa, whoa, the sweetness was fine, but the smell was a bit off-putting for me. Smell. If you're talking about candy, you should say aroma. Oh, right, sorry. So, it was the aroma that bothered you? Yeah, something about the spices, or maybe the oil. The aroma just didn't sit right with me. So, if it had a stronger, better aroma, it would be okay? Uh, that seems like a brute force solution. If it goes wrong, it could be disastrous. Don't worry, don't worry. So, when are you free? Want to come over? Should I come to you? Oh, so I don't get a choice here. Since then, Daiki and I have occasionally been catching up like this. However, meeting too frequently can lead to running out of things to talk about. So, naturally, when that happens, it's time to spread the gospel of sweets. As I started introducing Daiki to more sweets, things were going smoothly, but it looks like we've hit a bit of a snag. Therefore, I decided to step up as a seasoned sweets enthusiast. Well, I figured that anything covered in chocolate is bound to be delicious, and we started planning our next meetup. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be thrilled if you subscribed to our channel. Subscribing means you'll receive notifications for new videos, keeping you in the loop with all our latest content. Your support is vital to our growth. Let's enjoy and grow together.